Mr. Chair, what I want to do now is harken back when Mr. Dorsey was chair in 2019, the extent of our existential dilemmas and angst was over the fight of our lifetime, which was to have a complete census. And it was, and it still is. And Elizabeth Hardy um, is here, and Emily Garrett, who's been working for the county for about two years, but you may never have met, um, is also here with Elizabeth works uh, in the same unit. They're here to give you an update on the initial results from the 2020 census. And uh, as you know, we had a complete count committee and they worked tirelessly. And you know, we had an enumeration rate of 99.98%. And I think I'm gonna be dinging uh, both uh, um, Elizabeth and Emily on their performance appraisal for missing that final 0.02%. But um, I'm going to per turn it over to Elizabeth and Emily for a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Before you get started, you've been patient. And um, as far as the order of this, and just a, a thank you for bearing with us, you may have other things after 6.30 that you wanted most to be doing. So go ahead. Thank you. Great. Thank you for having us here tonight. We are excited because this is a once every 10 years thing that we get. We get census data. Um, so we're here tonight to talk about the redistricting data. Uh, that has been released, if I can get this to go. Okay. So in August, the Census Bureau started to release 2020 census data that started with the PL file, that's public law file 94171. And that is um, a file that's mandated for the Census Bureau to release data for the redistricting purposes to small level geographies. Um, and in, in included in that file is total population, population by race, population by age, 18 years and over, group quarters population, housing units, and housing vacancy. Uh, the Census Bureau is mandated to release that one year after Census Day, which as you may recall is April 1st, so it's April 1st, 2020. A little delayed for, for a couple reasons. Um, one, being the pandemic. Um, you might recall that uh, the stay-at-home orders were issued pretty much the same week that the census came out and asking people to participate. A uh, good thing that this time around it was online, so it made it a lot easier for people to participate. Um, but the census was extended uh, to, to uh, make sure that they got everyone counted. So it was supposed to end at the end of July, and it went to October 15th, um, which is a, is kind of far from April 1st, which is Census Day, and that's the day where you know you count where you are. Um, it led to some headaches with group quarters population because a lot of kids came home from college and in, in their school and were, were with mom and dad, but they should have been counted at their college and university. So there are some discrepancies with the data in terms of group quarters, but as we go through and, and do our analysis, we will be looking for that. Now you might say Arlington doesn't have a lot of group quarters, but there are a lot of families and they could have come home and stayed with, with their, their parents um, and they could have been counted um, there instead of a, away at school. Uh, another issue that has led to the delay is differential privacy. Um, and you might have heard this um, at, at Northern Virginia Regional Commission meetings. Uh, we are working with uh, fellow Northern Virginia demographers trying to get a handle on this issue. Essentially, what it is um, is that with the rise of computing, the rise of open data, information out there for public consumption, when you combine it with census data, there are opportunities to um, identify individuals. And that's a very serious thing for the Census Bureau because you know the Census Bureau takes the privacy and security as one of their foundations. Um, as you might recall that you know data cannot be released for 72 years. Um, so the new methodology used this time around to protect people's information is called differential privacy. Um, and it's essentially adding noise to data that's at the substate level. And as you go down in your geography, so you start at the state, that's a big geography, go down to county, track, block group, and then block. The smaller the geography, the less accurate the data is. Um, so we're working with our, our Northern Virginia colleagues to understand what is this impact, how do we deal with it, how can we use, use the data for those small level geographies? And it's really, it's a hard concept to get and understand with. So this is an example um, that the University of Virginia, Weldon Cooper Center came out with um, in one of their blog posts. They said, you know, with in areas that had 
black minority areas, which uh, localities that were less than 2% of the population identified as black in 2010, those areas showed an average of 74% growth in the black population. Then if you look at black ma uh, majority areas, uh, those showed an average of 6% decrease in the black population. And what this is, is this is not a result of actual population shifts, but the, this is a result of the algorithm that has been applied to keep people's information secure. So with that, <laughs> we have a population total of 238,643 in 2020. That is an increase of over 31,000 persons since 2010. If we look at our growth for the last 10 years, we grew by 14.9%, uh, which is over double that of the, of the national growth rate of 7.1. Um, and I know you have heard me say before that since the 1980, we have grown at a rate of 1% per year. Uh, this past 10 years shows we have grown at about 1.5%. Uh, so we had a higher growth rate over these past 10 years. Um, Arlington's population increase accounts for 4.9% accounts for of Virginia's growth and accounts for 9.7% of growth of Northern Virginia. There were also some changes to the race and Hispanic or Latino origin question that can lead to uh, changes in the data as well. Uh, the Census Bureau had changed the design and processing of this data. Uh, so in this statement from them, they say they're confident that the overall racial distributions are largely due to their changes in the questions and to their processing. But there are also some demographic changes that went on as well. I just want to review uh, very quickly what those changes of the questions were. Uh, so this is the Hispanic uh, origins question, and the changes was to that last checkbox. Um, and they took out the word print origin. They took out the word origin, for example. They found that that word origin was very confusing to people. So they just said print, for example. And they got a whole lot more responses that way. Um, they also changed the, the, the um, six categories in that response to reflect uh, changes in the Hispanic populations. Uh, if we look at the race question, there were about seven changes that occur, occurred to this question. Um, number one, they wanted participants to mark one race and print their origins. And this was the first time you could print your origin if you were of white or black or African American categories. Uh, they also provided six groups of, of white, black, or African American, American Indian, and Alaska Native categories based on the largest populations in the country. Uh, the other thing that was changed was the word Negro was removed from the black or African American category. Uh, the Asian, Hawa Asian and uh, Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islanders were reordered based on population size. Uh, um, Guamanian or Shamaro was changed to Shamaro. And then they also changed instructions on uh, the some other race to say print race or origin to align with the overall instructions. Um, they changed, the Census Bureau changed how they coded race as well. So previously, um, the number of characters that you could put in the write-in was 30. That's up to 200 now. And they also coded uh, the responses for six codes. So this is, the, this, is the, this graphic here is to, to help me explain what this means. Before, in 2010, um, that you could have up to two different codes for your race. Now you can have up to six. So if you see start at the top, uh, someone who responded they were black, they have one code. Uh, white, Hispan Hispanic, Blanco, they have three codes. And it goes down. So you could have up to six this time. And this leads to our results by race. Um, if we look at um, the white population, we came in at 58.9% uh, white. Um, and this is the, the lowest that the white population has, has ever been in Arlington, meaning conversely that um, the non-white population is the highest it's ever been in Arlington. So after the white population, the second highest is the, are those of Hispanic or Latino origin at 15.7%, followed by the Asian population at 114 and then the uh, black or African American population at 85 and if we look at the growth over um, the last 10 years, I'm just gonna go down this list and just highlight some things. The white population grew by 5%. That is only higher than the populations that 
declined. Um, the American Indian and Alaska Native declined, and also Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander declined. However, since they are such small populations, I'm not sure that this is an actual decline in the population or a differential privacy induced decline. <laughs> um, if we look at the black or African American population, that increased by 19, 19%. That's the first time that this population has increased since 1980. Uh, if we look at the Asian population, they had the overall highest number of people increase, um, increasing by over 7,000 and almost 38%. Those of some other race or two or more races had substantial increases over double. And I think this is in, due to the fact of the form changes uh, that we saw. And then those of Hispanic or Latino origin increased by 19.1%. If you may recall from 2020 to 2010, we had a huge decrease in the Hispanic population, but now we're up and over the levels that we were in, in 2000. So I'm going to hand it over to Emily to talk about age. Great. So as Elizabeth mentioned, this data release included population age 18 years and older. We were able to subtract the population 18 years and older from the total population to get the population under 18 years old, which is 42,080 people countywide. This age group grew by 9,454 persons, or a 29% increase since 2010. Arlington's population under the age of 18 years old had the largest increase in both number and growth rate since 1950 to 1960, but the total is still lower than the peak of 48,995 reported in the 1960 census. The percent of the population under 18 increased from 15.7% of the population in the 2010 census to 17.6% of the population in 2020. As you can see, the percent of population under 18 varies by race and ethnicity. The populations that I have identified as some other race, two or more races, or of Hispanic or Latino origin have much higher percentages of persons under the age of 18. Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, Asian, and white have the lowest percentage of persons under the age of 18. Overall, Arlington's population under the age of 18 grew twice as fast as the population 18 years and over. When broken down for each race and those of Hispanic origin, only white population and those of Hispanic or Latino origin show the same trend. The growth in the white population under the age of 18 was over six times that of the white population 18 years and over. Those of Hispanic or Latino origin under the age of 18 grew twice as fast as those 18 years and over. The Asian, some other race, and those of two or more races had higher growth rates for the population 18 years and over compared to those under 18 years. In particular, the 18 years and over population that identified as some other race grew tw over twice as fast as the under 18 years population. The black and African American population under 18 years grew at a rate of 18.6%. This is very close to the 18 years and over growth rate of 19% and could be considered to grow at the same rate. The American Indian or Alaska Native population are the smallest racial groups in Arlington and, when broken down by age, a slight change will result in a significant percentage change. In addition, the implementation of differential privacy can skew results for small populations, and it is difficult to determine if the change was statistically significant for these racial populations. The Census Bureau classifies all people not living in housing units as living in group quarters. A group quarters is a place where people live or stay in a group living arrangement that is owned or managed by an entity or organization providing housing and or services for its residents. From 2010 to 2020, Arlington's group quarters population increased by 94 persons from 2,892 in 2010 to 2,986 in 2020. For this census, the incarcerated population was counted differently. Instead of being counted in the location where they are incarcerated, they were counted where they lived prior to being incarcerated. 
The 2020 census reports Arlington to have 119,085 housing units, which is an increase of 13,681 units since 2010. Housing units are invariant and are not impacted by differential privacy. On the other hand, characteristics pertaining to housing such as vacancy and occupancy are impacted by differential privacy. Because of this, these numbers are preliminary and are subject to change upon the release of the detailed demographic and housing characteristic files to be released by the Census Bureau in 2022. A household is an occupied housing unit. Every person living in that housing unit is considered part of the same household. Arlington households well surpassed the 100,000 mark in the 2020 census, reaching 109,912. Over the last decade, 11,862 households were added to Arlington, the largest amount since the 1970 census. Arlington's average household size, or the number of people per household, has been between 2.07 and 2.12 since the 1980 census. The 2020 census reported a 2.14 average household size, increasing by 2.7% since 2010, and only the second time Arlington's average household size increased in its history. Here you can see our next steps. We will do a block level review comparing household units, total population, population by race, population by age, and average household size to the 2010 census results. We will also use the 2020 census data to evaluate and update our methodologies, including population estimates and the population forecast. And additionally, we will put together various data resources, including census tabulation tables for specific areas, including planning areas and civic associations, a series of briefing papers and an interactive dashboard. In the meantime, two demographic dashboards are available online at arlingtonva.us slash demographics. These dashboards utilize American Community Survey data and show various demographics countywide and by census tract. Thank you both. Welcome, although you've been here for a little while, Ms. Garrett. Um, Thank you. And uh, I, I'm guessing we'll have at least one comment that is positive and so thankful for all that has been done. I'm sort of trying to, I think Ms. Crystal having been the co-chair, but um, I think it's wise that the 0 .02 that is not counted is not deducted or, or counted with respect to your great work for us. Um, thank you is the, the big thought. And um, certainly I think I've sent one note hoping for age da data and I know why that is gonna come in due course down the road in 2022, but on behalf of all of us, a big thanks. Um, if there's anything you wanted to add um, after getting through a very helpful slide deck, we will want the slide deck in addition to going the, to, to those two sites. That would be great. Um, but a big thank you for all the work and the patience this afternoon. Thanks. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm going to present. I, I know Elizabeth won't like this, but you know, Bryna wore the, had this on her car for a year, and we're going to give this to Elizabeth. Also, along with the, uh, people wonder what happens to county board proclamations from the chair, but this is <laughs> proclamation, so. Uh, well deserved. And thank you, Ms. Helfer, for adding that to perhaps the room um, that Ms. Hardy, or, or a room in Ms. Hardy's house, um, but, <laughs> or here. Thank you both very much. Really appreciate it. Um, and we'll take a look and we will probably have additional questions, you know. From Thank you very else. much. Sure.